speaking now. Let's take a listen. Hello, can we please begin? What is the uh, noise I hear there? Can you please switch off your phones, including those who are broadcasting? Please put your phones on silent. Thank you. Uh, good evening, everyone, uh, citizens of Israel. Our confrontation with the coronavirus crisis, the global crisis, our confrontation has uh, been going on non stop. We've done much to overcome the virus, but relaxing discipline is a danger. From the beginning of the crisis, we invested a broad national effort to block the coronavirus, and we achieved tremendous successes. I'd like to show you, please, the infection rate. As you can see, microphone, can I use the microphone, please? No gloves. Thank you. You can see that on the 18th of March, we were on 118 daily infections. It reached 729 daily infections, down uh, up by the small peak to 558. And yesterday, we had 30. Yesterday, we had 31, if I'm not wrong. Uh, I'm following everything very closely. This is, of course, a huge achievement. Another achievement is that, at the same time, the number of recoveries has gone up. And in the state of Israel today, the number of recoveries is more than the number of infections. These are very, very positive trends. We, of course, grieve with the families of the people who have died from the pandemic. It's a pandemic the likes of which has not been seen in 100 years. And as far as the families are concerned, anyone who died is is enormous uh, devastation to lose a father and a mother or a grandma, or grandpa, to leave orphans. These are things that uh, break all of our hearts. And though our main effort has been to save lives, and I want to emphasize this, because there are people who dismiss this or say, well, there's no problem, they're exaggerating. No, our main effort to save Life, there's no exaggeration here. In Israel, first of all, to date, 235 people have died. Each of them was a world unto himself. But I want to show you what is happening in other developed countries. Developed countries that have health care systems among the most advanced, if not the most advanced in the world. In Italy, 29,000 people have died. In Britain, 28,000 people. In Spain, 25,000 people. In France, 25,000 people. In the United States, 69,000, and the number's going up. But in the city of New York itself, which is around the size of Israel, a little more, 18,000 deaths. It's like the state of Israel, more or less. Another state that is the size of the state of Israel and is known around the world as one of the most advanced countries in the world, Sweden, two, over 2,000 deaths. In Belgium, which I'm showing you here, which has a population the same as ours, we're nine point something, 7,924 deaths compared to 235 in Israel. I want to put this on a global metric for you of developed countries. Belgium, this is adjusted to 100,000 people. Belgium, Spain, Italy, Britain, France, the Netherlands, Sweden, Ireland, the United States, Switzerland, Luxembourg, Portugal, Germany, Denmark, Canada, Israel. 
This is no coincidence. There are all sorts of attempts to explain this. To belittle this, people say maybe it's the climate. It's not the climate, unfortunately. Unfortunately, it isn't the climate. In Brazil, it's warm. Also in other parts of our region, and there are very high numbers of deaths, we see this in other countries as well, people say, maybe it's because we're an island, we're an island. Britain's also an island, this isn't an island. People say maybe it's the age, even when you adjust for age, accounts for a small percentage of what's going on here. Israel's achievements in the fight against the coronavirus serve as a model for many countries, and the world is looking at us with admiration. We're learning from the world. The world is learning from us. A few days ago, I was in an Internet conference with the leaders of uh, some very successful countries, uh, Austrian Chancellor, Oh, Sebastian, of course, this is the clever countries. I don't know about clever countries, but I can certainly say successful countries. And on Friday, I was invited to a conference of dozens of leaders from the European Union who wanted to learn from us and hear what we were doing in order to continue the success. Now, our success is not based on genes or climate or the fact we're an island because none of the these things are true. They're based on three basic things. The first is the calculated and rapid steps that we took place once the crisis erupted, including closing the borders, home isolation, and digital tracking. The second thing, the second factor for our success, is the incredible devotion of the medical teams, the doctors, the nurses, the Magendavidadong teams, the paramedics, the hospital managers, and their people, all the factors who are working to save lives around the clock. And once again, I want to salute you. The third factor, and in my eyes the cardinal factor without which success would not have been possible, is your response, citizens of Israel, your ability to listen to the health ministry's instructions, because without you, none of this would have happened. And without you, it would not be able to continue. Based on these achievements, we in recent days have put together a comprehensive plan, an organized responsible plan that will enable the state of Israel to gradually return to a new normal, a corona normal. I shall present soon the steps to relax the coronavirus relaxations, but I must say that returning the private space, public space, and the economy to a kind of normal will continue to depend on you. Depends on your self-discipline, on your commitment, your mutual responsibility that is so typical of our country and our nation, your responsibility. Now, there are a few critical metrics that any change in which will force us to stop and rethink, maybe even to take a step back. I'd like you to take a look here at the new infections. This is the first metric. We, two days ago, were at 50 infections. Yesterday, 31 infections. The day, day before, 50. Yesterday, 31. We say that if we reach 100 new infections a day who are not from the hot spots, i.e. people from abroad or uh, the red communities or old age homes, if in the general public the number of new infections added each day passes the 100, stop. The second metric is the rate of infection. We were at the peak of infections. How, what, what was it? Three days? Every three days. Every three days. And we're now at every 31 days we're expecting a doubling of the number of infections. We say that if we reach a doubling every 10 days, will stop. And the third factor is the number of people who are seriously ill. This is a really important metric. At the moment, we are 
or 90, 90 serious uh, cases, and we say that if we reach 250 serious cases, we will stop. We will stop and rethink our course. I want you to understand, it's like a pilot is flying a plane, and he knows his altitude, pressure, and fuel. If he sees a red light, for one of these things, then he has to immediately rethink his trajectory, and that's what we're going to do with the coronavirus. We are vigilantly following the metrics, I want to say once a day, uh, but it's two, three times a day, uh, all the time, and we'll continue following. If a red light comes on, we will have to change policy, and God forbid we reach a situation where all these mighty achievements are for nothing. So, citizens, I want you to continue keeping a safe distance between people of two meters, washing hands and hygiene, and what, wearing a mask. It's like there's a Passover Seder, you have matzah and maro, here you have distance, hygiene, and masks. And you have to follow it because that is the key. Everything is measured and in the end decided by this. I sat in a nine-hour internet uh, government meeting today, video conference, and I want to say and I want, first of all, to thank my ministerial colleagues who are working around the clock together with the Directors General and the professional teams doing incredible work. All this work, thanks to you, thanks to them. And I want to say that we've put together a, an organized plan, and I want to speak about it. First of all, we are, we are scrapping the 100-meter restriction for leaving your home. You can leave your homes for any distance. I know you've been dreaming about it for a long time. Here it is. Another piece of good news. At home, the personal familial space, you can visit first-tier family. This is good news. You can also visit grandma and grandpa. And this is perhaps the most important thing. But I am asking you, please do not hug them, do not kiss them, do not touch them. Keep a distance. I know it's difficult, especially for small uh, grandkids who want immediately to run and to jump on grandma and grandpa. But it's really important that you um, parents keep discipline, keep a distance in order to protect them. We're still limiting restrictions to no more than 20 people and only in public spaces, but if everything goes as expected in two weeks on the 17th of May, we will allow gatherings of 50 people. Even before then, on Lagba Omer, sorts of weddings around Lagba Omer, we shall enable weddings of 50 people. That is, chupa and the, the ceremony, not dancing, no touching, but the ceremony ceremony itself. You can start planning those weddings. On the 31st of May, we'll allow 100 people. And on the 14th of June, we're hoping we'll completely cancel the gatherings restrictions. But all this depends once more that at no stage a red light doesn't come on. And if a red light comes on, because people aren't following the rules, about Pesach, Matzah, and uh, Maro, about uh, distance, masks, and hygiene. This is Pesach, Matzah, and Maro. This is the Maro. These are the bitter herbs. Uh, you have to follow this. If you follow this, then we'll be able to continue with the plan that we will elaborate. Second, we're opening Israel's economy. As I promised throughout the whole crisis, we'll do everything to look after you, citizens, uh, independent, free, self-employed people, and uh, employed people and people who are job seekers. First of all, we want to fill the gap in your income, or at least part of it, especially of these small businesses and 
and self-employed people, the hairdressers, the falafel sellers, the cosmeticians, and no less importantly, we want to help you without unnecessary bureaucracy. We saw this in the State of Israel. The finance minister and I went to the government and the Knesset and we asked for a lot of money. And we got it. And we wanted to dispense these billions of shekels to self-employed people and businesses. We came up against lots of bureaucratic problems. That's how it works. And because it stopped either with the banks or those criteria and claimed they hadn't received enough guarantees or uh, bureaucrats, that's, that's bureaucracy for you. What they did in the United States, they just built a computer plan, you go into the plan, you go into the software, you fill in the questionnaire, and if you meet the questionnaire, if you meet the criteria, you get the, the money into your bank account. When we saw that the money isn't coming at the necessary rate, and it didn't, uh, let's say the truth, we learned something from the State of Israel. We can also learn from other countries. We went to the bureaucrats and said, if someone goes into this software and meets the criteria, he needs to get the money immediately. And that's what we're going to do from tomorrow. And the uh, finance ministry will be able to elaborate. And I know that you're under incredible uh, physical pressure to speed up these steps. And this will help people, and they say quite rightfully, we want to see the money in our accounts, and they're right. And if the money doesn't arrive, then the physical pressure will be less moderate. We want to see results. You know that even in the previous decade, when I was the finance minister and then uh, prime minister, I dealt with economic crises, serious economic crises, reshape the economy and guarantee growth. And thus, working together, we'll do so together, we'll roll up our sleeves, we'll work hard, and we'll bring the, put the economy back on course. We'll make sure to not just fill what's missing, but get the wheels rolling again of growth and consumption so that people get money, they spend the money, and they start buying things at the markets, in the shops. And when they start doing that, the economy will start to move, and then we get more people into commerce. Now, things are not going to return to the routine before corona, but we can build a much stronger economy with much stronger employment, and this is our first duty. You know that yesterday the uh, public sector returned to work full using these uh, purple permits, which we have to make sure that all the offices have. On Thursday, we'll open the malls and the markets under the restrictions that the economy minister will elaborate on. People who know me know how much I love to visit Machana Yehuda market here in Jerusalem. And I want you to know that I'm doing it. Not, and I don't just do it during elections. And I also like to buy food there. So you can explain maybe that to take food from there as a takeaway. You're allowed to eat it. You can't. I'm not committing that when I buy the pickles, I won't take it and steal a little pickle. But, uh, but that's the, the rule. You can buy food, not eat it there. That'll come. The whole question of restaurants and eating in situ will come later, not just yet. Uh, another point, gatherings uh, that can get out of control. The third thing, we are restoring the education system to full functioning. Uh, you know, first from third grade and uh, sixth form have already gone back to school. Uh, before the end of the month, the other students will also return to their classes. Next Sunday on the 10th of May, the kindergartens will start again. Uh, there are questions about daycare centers. We'll discuss that on the 14th of May, uh, 14th of June. The informal education will return, and the education minister uh, will elaborate on that. Fourth, we shall gradually restore sport and leisure. We shall release 
guidelines about museums and libraries and parks and sports facilities. They'll open gradually before the middle of uh, um, for the middle of June, and the uh, Minister of Sport will explain. Same with the uh, vacation resorts and civil aviation. And I want to tell you in advance, as for civil aviation, we're really seriously considering this. We want to connect Israel back to the world, but we want to do so in such a way that people who come from infection hotspots don't end up infecting Israel, which, as you've seen, is in a much better state than almost every country we have trade and tech and tourism relations with. We'll do it in such a way that we will not endanger you. Now, everything I've presented here gives a lot of optimism and hope on the horizon. The horizon looks brighter, but the ongoing situation assessment takes place based on the actual situation. We do a situation assessment based on the actual situation and not on the basis of fantasies and wishes. We are dealing with a huge global crisis. Nobody in the world can say certainly what will happen. I'm telling you this because I'm, because I'm, talk, I'm in touch with a lot of world leaders and with the biggest experts in the world, and they all tell us, I cannot tell you what is going to happen. doesn't mean we should give up or get depressed because... To date, we've managed to deal with this crisis in an exceptional fashion, but it's quite possible that the virus will burst out again in a second wave, maybe even more seriously. We must be ready for this. Be ready for this with a series of steps. I won't elaborate them right now. We're working on it. Not just the question of reopening the economy, reopening the country during corona routine. We're preparing for a situation that before we get a vaccine, we could get a second wave. We're not sure it'll happen. I hope it won't happen. I'm praying it won't happen. But I do know that, God willing, and thanks to you, we'll be ready for it. It means buying more respirators. We're doing that. It means technologies we haven't used to date. According to law, which we shall operate, it means maybe new techniques, which we're working on at the moment. I spoke with the, our technology chiefs to find all sorts of means that the state of Israel is really good at, like sensors. Maybe everyone, maybe children, I want first of all children, maybe children can have sensors that warn you like, uh, like uh, a car. If you get too close, it, it gives a buzz. I don't know whether it's possible, whether we can install this. We're looking into it. We can, in various means, try to overcome the coronavirus crisis and restore the economy and sport and income and leisure and children and education almost to full operations. I'm really proud with my whole heart of this country and the way they've been working together. Our success so far has been tremendous because we're doing it together and we'll continue to do so together. I'm also working so that in the coming days we'll set up the unity government that Israel needs together and together we'll deal with all the challenges and care for your needs, the citizens of Israel, for our country, for our economy, for our health, for our lives. Thank you very much. ערב טוב, אדוני ראש הממשלה, חברי השרים, אני שמח היום לעמוד פה. Good evening, I'm happy to stand here at this, an event that shows, I don't know whether we can say that we're in control, but the situation of the infections has improved immeasurably. And we're talking about a transition to turn this from, from a graph like this that goes down 
Uh, on the medical side, as the Prime Minister showed, to a graph that goes up in economic growth. At the end of February, when I think there wasn't even a single infection in Israel, the Prime Minister called me to his office and said, listen, we're heading for a major event here, both in terms of health and the economy. And we need the best minds. And I remember how the same night, together with the head of the National Security Council, we enlisted the best minds. I don't want to mention them because I will forget them and I don't want to do them an injustice. Really very serious people, physicists, math math mathematicians, scientists, technology experts. And these teams, together with the Prime Minister, started working and to provide solutions. Things don't just happen. And I want to tell you that the State of Israel, that the State of Israel in this crisis has used all of its abilities. And thank God we have abilities. All the agencies were put into action. It was really an event that all the minds, all the forces in the state of Israel took part, and therefore, thank God we are where we are. I am... Um